Oh, pull that light. Like, oh! <laughs> I used to say Craig Bellum used to be hard. Craig Bellum. Oh! oh we don't like to say that, do we? <laughs> Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a new video. And this video is going to be absolutely sensational because I've been joined by refereeing legend, Mike Dean. Dino, how are you doing? I'm all right, mate. Looking forward to the day. Should be a good laugh and a uh, bit of a chat on the way around, catch up on a few things. Absolutely. I've been hearing good things about you, sir. Well, with regards to golf or refereeing. <laughs> <laughs> golf. Oh, yeah. I've, I've tried and play three or four times a week here at Mould, so. Um, Play off four, so we'll see what happens today. Absolutely right. So you're off four, I'm off 16. So that, how does it work? I'll give you a shot to hold. Shot hold, yeah. Night. That's fine, yeah. Lovely stuff. Let's Have go. a good day. Come on, four! Good luck, mate. I'll need it. Oh, that it. oh, absolute Dean machine. Amazing what a cup of coffee does here. <laughs> when you walked off, I thought you were walking up with it. Just right. like... Can't lose me tears at a pound for 20. <laughs> right, here we go. Nice. Well done. Down the mid, isn't it? Right by mine, so we have a chat on the way up. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Down the Bet Midler. So Mike, again, thank you so much, mate. We've been trying to get you on for ages. Um, I appreciate you doing it. Uh, how long have you been playing for and who got you into golf? Um, I started when I was about 12 or 13. Um, we had a summer camp at school at Pensby where I used to go to, uh, one of the playing fields, just to try a bit of golf. So I thought I'd give it a go and kind of enjoyed it and took it up from, say, the age of 12 or 13. And a little half set for Christmas and it went from there. So I kind of, I wouldn't say, fell out of love with the game for a while but I got to uh, probably 18, 19 and I think when, when we get to 18, 19 your, your priorities will probably be different on a, set, yeah, yeah. On, a, yeah, on, a, on a Friday and Saturday night so um, I kind of didn't play for about seven, eight years, I played now and again and then I kind of I took it more when the referees went full time in 2000 at Staverson Park where we used to go, it used to be a golf course there. Yeah. So we used to get down there early on the Wednesday and have, a, have 18 holes of golf on the Wednesday and then train. Thursday, Friday, and then wow. go from there. So it kind of took off from there. And my wife plays as well now, which is good. So she plays here as well. So it's good excuse to come out and play a bit of golf. Amazing. And you're like a proper caddy as well, aren't you? I wouldn't say a proper caddy. Well, uh, you... I, I do do it. Um, uh, I just got into it probably four or five years ago. I uh, got in touch with one of the guys, see if I could do a, some kind of caddying somewhere. So I've done one at the Buckinghamshire. Um, what a course that is. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful, really, to be fair. It's tough. Tough when you're first carrying a bag, you don't really know what to do. And then um, it kind of went from there. The following year, I picked up another bag from another girl, and then try and do two or three a year if I can. All depends on of the game schedules, yeah, um, yeah. times of year as well. And obviously, with obviously last year, 2020, didn't do anything last year because of the COVID situation. Yeah, absolutely, it kind of messed everybody up, you know. So I've done one this year in Sweden, uh, start of June, um, with Whitney Hillier, who I've carried for a few times. Um, and hopefully I'll try and get one or two more in. Hopefully there's one in southern Spain in November I'll try and do, but again, it all depends on the COVID situation, so. Absolutely. Yeah, and good. what you mentioned there, you played with the refs. What other refs are into golf? Uh, well, from the old school, when, yeah. I, was, when I was playing, it was um, Paul Barber, yes. Dunn Durkin, <laughs> Styles, all them kind of people. Absolute legend. Um, and then obviously now it's myself, Michael Oliver plays quite a bit. Uh, but Did you see Mike Oliver the other week in yeah, the large he, at Wembley? Yeah, he not only then joined himself at a football match, mate, as you well know. <laughs> um, but no, we're doing well, and Michael plays up about five or six as well, I think. He plays up at, um, is it Clove House up near Newcastle? Oh, that's well nice. So Michael plays up there. Um, but there's a few other guys play, but more guys are just taking up. Oh, but he even had drove me as well. Come on! <laughs> right, talk us through this. What are you going for? Well, I've got a little gap wedge. It's only 81 to the centre, um, but I'm not usually that good with me gat wedge, I kind of bottle it a bit, so I have to wear. As long as I commit to it, I'll be okay. He says open. That's 
That's got to go. Go on. That's got to go. Oh, oh! I would have gone 56 if I had it, but I don't. So I'm going 60. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you guys left golf clubs on the golf course? So I've done it about 14 times. I'm gutted about it. I love the little fifty. Is that there, St George's, your 56? Isn't yeah, it's <laughs> in the rough. Yeah, oh, a nice quick one from there, mate. We're dancing, Mike. We are. We are dancing. That's rubbish. Might need that for a half. So, Mike, I don't know if you're if you're aware, but just on this stand on my line if you want. <laughs> it's alright. Just stand on my line. <laughs> Gee whiz. <laughs> God's sake, man. Wow. It's alright. Don't worry about got an excuse now if I miss it. Go, go. Oh. It is quick, isn't it? Come no, on. not really. Oh. Well, they all anyway, haven't you? <laughs> oh, he started he with starts a pass. off of the old Franz car. Pat, one up. What a shot. Yeah. What a shot. <laughs> Cheers. So Mike, you're a legend of the refereeing game, been at the top <laughs> level for absolutely years now. But how did you get into refereeing? Um, I finished school, 16. Um, out of work for about six months. Just sat at home all day watching Rainbow and stuff like that on the Rainbow. TV. Yeah, yeah, George and Zippy. That's the one, absolute yeah. Absolute legend. And then um, just put on loads of weight and just I used to be a goalkeeper, believe it or not. Um, Any good? That was average, uh, <laughs> average, not the best. And then um, I thought, well, how can I keep doing something I like, which is get involved with football? So um, I just started the referee, so I took the exam in 85 and went from there. So obviously you need a bit of luck on the way as well. You need a bit of, you need to have a good game when you're getting assessed. You need to be in the right place at the right time, you know, pick up the right, the right feel for the game when, you, when you're coming through. It's, it's tough, because I started when I was 17 and, you know, when he was 17, probably 30 odd years ago, it was, it was a tough to get involved because Sunday league football's changed a lot from then how it is now. Um, Mentality is a little bit different now, I think, whereas before it was more of a go out on a Saturday night, have a good laugh, and just yeah. let us bit of steam on the Sunday. It's a bit more, bit more control now, I think, on the Sunday morning. So. As a 17 year old going into refereeing, weren't you, wasn't it just like, oh my god, there's like 22 blokes? Oh, it was scary. I mean, I mean, I started on the, on the local Leeson District League. Um, yeah under 16 down to under under 11s and obviously I've done the youth football to about 18 but I used to watch Sammy Home and away all the time you see so yeah, if yeah. you want to get promoted in the, in the game of refereeing you've got a referee on a Saturday so wow, I probably okay. put me for like three or four years to just watch Sammy Home and away all the time I've missed the game for like four or five years so and then I thought to myself you know if, if I was bad would Sammy come and watch me so I thought I'm, I might as well give it a miss for a couple of years and yeah. focus more on the referee on a Saturday and uh, one thing led to another and it kind of took off pretty quick after that so, amazing yeah it was good right I'm here Yeah, right. Oh, I've had one here. Absolutely had one. Good strike, though. <laughs> and before refereeing, Mike, you had you had quite an interesting job, didn't you? I used to work in a poultry factory about five miles from here. So, um, yeah, I started there, oh, trying to think when it was, probably about 2000, uh, no, about 1991, 92, I think. Yeah. Um, I used to work in the factory to start with, like, packing up all the chicken fillets and stuff like that. And yeah. then um, I kind of moved to the other end where we had to, uh, well, we, let's just say we welcomed them in alive and they didn't leave alive. So we kind of... Right, we, so your first day, basically you, you killed chickens, yeah? Yeah, by about the second or third week. Yeah. yeah. I just went in, just started hanging them and 
<laughs> so the first time you killed a chicken, I suppose you just take it, you, ring, you ringed its neck? No, no, you, no. no, you don't know the foot. You know, oh, you went to the old... No, you know, you hang them upside down, it's all done by machines and stuff and all that. Stuff. Oh, so it's not old school, oh, like no. you come here. No, no, no. No, you're killing 135,000 chickens a day, so you haven't got time to do all that. 100 more? Yeah, exactly. And we're, I think, from still, still speaking to some of the lads that work there now, and they're killing nearly a million chickens a week. Wow. Yeah, it's a proper foul job. <laughs> <laughs> Miss it. Oh, that is a. That's got to sit. Oh, <laughs> get in. Oh, hit it, hit it, oh. hit it. Oh. <laughs> Will the real Mike Dean please stand up? <laughs> Here we go, Mike. Oh, there's a good gap there. Here Easy. we go. Easy. Right, if I pull this out of the bag, Mike retire. Here we go. Oh, you turnip. Aim out right and roll it down into the green. Go. Go. Didn't need much more, oh, mate. You swine. You've got to hit him. That's a l got to hit him. I that's, leave him short. Well, that's my biggest bug going, leaving put short, as people know. You can't leave it short. You can't leave it short. You can't leave it short, but this is for five, isn't it? It is for this five. This is for five, so it's got to go in, because... Well, because... Because you're going to give me that. Because Dino's on fire. Pat is terrified. No! Walked it in. That's a gimme. Mike Dean with a par. It's all square. What a game. What a par three, by the way. What a long par three. Oh, Rubbish. Not happy with that? That's an hour short, that. No, it's on, isn't it? No, it's gone down the bank on the right. Oh my god. That could be interesting. Look, <laughs> very interesting. Pony. Absolutely <laughs> pony. So, Mike, being a ref is a bit of a thankless task, isn't it? You just get battered from all sorts. You're always going to upset one set of fans. How thick-skinned have you got to be to be a referee? Um, quite thick-skinned. We've also got a, the mentality side of it. It's got to be pretty good. Um, when I started on the Premier League in 2000, 20, 21 years ago, um, I found it quite hard because there's a lot of, as I said before, mentioning Graham, Barbara and Paul and more of you. Yeah. Big personalities within the group. Um, <coughs> very, very hard to speak out when, you, when you're within the group, like in, the, in the classroom, trying to learn off people because you felt a little bit undermined by the big guys in it. Um, obviously, getting us onto, onto the field of play, you know, you are going to get a bit of grief, you have got to get a bit of fixed skin, but the, lot, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. It's a bit like yourself, you know, the, the more you're doing this, the easier it becomes you to, to get yeah, involved yeah. and talk not, to not people. Not golf. Well, no, no. <laughs> but the interview inside of it, because it, it, it takes a while to get used to what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Putting the question in the right way. Um, but it can be tough. I mean, I've had... I've had a lot of grief over the years, if I'm being honest with you. Some, some deserve, some not deserve, but it does come with a job, rightly or wrongly. And you do upset one set of fans, and you, you don't go out there on purpose to actually do it on, you know, do it no, on of course purpose. You, know, you make an honest mistake, put your hands up and move on. You know, it's like a striker misses an open goal. You know, he doesn't get battered by his spectators, by his fans, does he? Or his manager, he kind of said, well, maybe next time he'll put the ball in the back of that. You've just got to try and work a bit harder, to be fair. So, but it, it is. Some of it's like too, too far though, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, obviously we've had trouble this year with um, 
stuff I had off uh, the internet and stuff, or my, my family did with regards to um, death threats and stuff, which is pretty bad. Um, but that's that, that's not pretty bad. That's just absolutely yeah, disgusting. It, but I think that's where sometimes the actual, you know, the the people who own the, these certain websites are going to become accountable for it. And obviously, I've had the problems in we with the euro as well, with the with the um, yeah, just the three English lads as well. Just you know, idiots. Just and I think I think the actual. The people who run them have got to be made more accountable to be fair you know i know there's, there's some idiots out there that do put some really stupid stuff out and stuff that you don't deserve but um i think the accountability has got to lie with the people who uh who actually own the uh, these websites and stuff so but. absolutely and on the field of play what ex-pro used to proper give it to you like i think mike that, you that well I, I used to say craig bellamy used to be hard craig bellamy but, but thing is with craig he used to he used to he used to play on the edge so he, he gave 100% wherever he played for you always look at him he used to always try for every single club he didn't like toss it off so to speak he yeah. just tried all the time wanted to win all the time you know one or two things don't work for him who's the scapegoat it's the man in the middle isn't it all the time always has been always will be and never change never change unfortunately but what sort of stuff would he say to you well not this repeatable he just well, we, can, we can bleep well he can always just got you all kinds of stuff like you know you f- what's going on that's got this kind of shit you're rubbish it's just the usual stuff or you know you, you don't deserve to be on the pitch same pitch as me that kind of stuff but it does happen but you know it's just in the heat of the moment any player can be t- can be tough when you're refereeing if it's not going right for him right now you watch tv now and you see some really lovely players who don't say nothing but if it goes against them you'll be surprised what does go on yeah it, it, it is because it's, it's heat of the moment heat of the battle and it's uh you just react and I'd, I'd be the same if i was a player you know <laughs> if i'm going out at three o'clock and walking past the white line and Something doesn't go right, right the first five minutes, then who are you going to blame apart from your, your teammates? <laughs> Mike Dean. Well, yeah, or, or anybody. <laughs> Start picking on the ref, because if you get on the ref, you never know. If, he's, if he hasn't got thick skin like I have, he may well, you know, not be strong enough to carry on refereeing in that game. Please tell me you give it back to him. I do, I do. I mean, yes. um, I, I, I give it back, to be fair, sometimes, and I, I probably shouldn't do, but I think I've been on for 21 years and I kind of know what goes on and I don't... If I get if I make a mistake and I get speaking to you like then I'll, t- I'll, I'll accept that because yeah. I've made a big mistake. But just in general banter and someone's giving me grief, I just I just can't stand it. So if I'll give them stick back. So why not? Love it. Why not? Absolutely. Why fair, not? Exa- why not? Indeed. To be fair, the players appreciate it because I may well apologise. Yeah. Running past them five minutes. Yeah. Don't worry about it's all part and parcel of the game. Which it is. Love that. No problem. Love that. Right. I want to see a bit of magic here now, mate. Oh, 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 oh get in. Get in. <laughs> Yes! Yeah! Away, away, away! You're booked, come on! Oh! Right! <laughs> four for three though. Oh, four for three. Of course, you get a shot. Why not? That's fine, that. It works. That's fine. You want to be left or right of the tree you need to be. Uh, hopefully. They like a tree in the middle of the fairway here, don't they? Yeah, well, you know. I like it. Mate. Miss it. Miss it. Miss it. Miss it. Get around. Yes, round. It's round. <laughs> Mate, your driving is absolutely sensational. Yes, it, it, I have my moments. Mike, um, football fans are football fans. Um, what is it like for you when you go out on a night out? Do you get <sighs> shit? I can't remember the last time I went out. <laughs> um, not really, no. I mean, we had a few issues many years ago when, when I used to went, went to a pub and got a bit of grief off a few few lads, but I think it's moved on a bit now. I don't really go clubbing. I'm 53, don't I? I don't really, I go out for meals and stuff. Don't go into a pub where the music's on. A bit old school now, so. Um, yeah, game of, pe- game pe- of golf and a, bite yeah, and a beer after. Yeah, people come up to you and speak to you, which, which is good. Have a chat. Uh, it's a lot easier when you're abroad. I mean, when I go to Spain all the time, people just want to come and just talk football. They won't ask you anything controversial. They just want to know how you do it. Yeah. You know, what's the best, best stadium, best crowd, that kind of stuff, you know, best players. 
but you don't get grief when you go abroad. It's just just the normal people just happy to see you out there and just uh, want to chat about football, which is great. But do you get blokes like mucking around, sort of coming up with their bank cards and going, Ooh. Yeah, you could say that. Or you get always get somebody. You got a red and yellow card in your pocket. I'm like, why would I want to carry a red and yellow card in my pocket? I'm in Spain and all with my wife, <laughs> grandson, or whatever. Yeah. I like, yeah, just please, gonna Next time you go, please do it. Nah, just, just for a laugh. It's just proper bad, though, isn't it? <laughs> You've got to take a break from, from it sometimes, but, but you do get it all the time. Talking about yellow and red cards there, do you find it hard to send someone off? No. 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 <laughs> um, I, I like to try and manage as best I can. I'm mm. assuming, I'm, with my experience, I think I, I can manage better than, than most of the guys. Um, but I also think that if a player deserves to be sent off, then there's no hiding place and you, you've got to do your job. You can't be a soft touch because you've been on the league for 20 odd years, you know. And with the old VAR being involved now as well, um, if I go yellow card, because I think I don't just go yellow card, VAR looks at it and goes red, you best probably go in stronger and being downgraded than going low and being upgraded, in my opinion. But do you ever get intimidated given that red card? Not, not intimidated, no. Cause I think, I think Even about, when you were younger? Oh, when I was, oh, when I was like younger, yeah, I was petrified when I was younger. Because you think this is because it's a big call. It's a big call when you're yeah. younger. You know, I've been on the Premier League 20 years, and for my first game at Leicester Southampton in 2000, I had no yellow cards, no red cards. So this dead easy, this Premier League. Like, yeah. I've had thousands since. <laughs> you, know? you reckon there was because you didn't? You were too scared yeah, to. Not too scared, or probably Just play on. Play or the, on. Or the play players on. also thought because it's my first game, them give me a bit of an easy ride, which does happen. You know. Um, you don't get easy ride anymore, and there's no hiding place. So you know you've got just got to go out and do your job properly. You know you're quite emotional on the pitch, aren't you? you yeah. You, I, I like the way you referee. You're sort of like you, quite dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. Do you practice? No. How no. To give yeah, I'm the in the mirror. I'm right in the mirror, don't I, all the time? <laughs> the yellow. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I don't. But I just I enjoy what I do. You see. Yeah. Um, I think p people don't realise that as a referee, oh, you've got to be thick skinned you, you just do it because you've got no friends, that kind of stuff. But I do. I, I love my job. I've, I've done it for. Premier League for 21 years, football league since '95 on the line. Um, you know, I, I, there's no better job, is it? You know, for run round 90 minutes of the week, best seats in the house, and you haven't got to pay for it. It's ideal. But I, I just love the job. I think it's great, it's fantastic. And I'll, when, I, when I do finish, I'll, I'll be devastated to finish. But I know it's going to it's going to come soon, so we'll have to wait and see. Do you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I'm 53 now, so you can't go on forever. And, and what I don't want to do is outstay me welcome and. The you know, last five, six months of, of what might be my last season, I just don't referee well. I want to finish refereeing well, and I want to finish my last game on a high. And you know, I want to, I want to go out still refereeing well. I don't want to go out just to go through the motions for the last five or six months. That just like not, a footballer who's passed, yeah, it just keeps so, playing, yeah. keeps playing, just dropping. Yeah, you want to go out on the. You want I want, to go, I want to go out. I want to go out. I would, I would think I may have one, one more year left in me. If I'm being honest, I'm 53 now, so yeah. to say, you know, you shouldn't be refereeing. I don't think in the Premier League when you're 54, 55 years of age, it's, it's. I want to say you shouldn't be. If you've got the, the fitness and the, and the experience, then then yes. Obviously, I've got the experience. My fitness is nowhere near as what it should have been 15, 20 years ago, and it never will be. And when guys who are refereeing now are mid-30s, they get to my age, 53, their fitness won't be the same. So I think you've got to use a little bit more, a bit more of your knowledge, a bit more, read the game a little bit better, get in the position you need to be in. Um, players respect you because you've been on 20 odd years. I can make a decision from 25, 30 yards away, and players accept it, where the younger guys come on and they make it from 25, 30 yards away, they've got no chance. I was going to say, is it like a footballer who's like played for years, doesn't need the pace like Perlo, he knows where that, he knows where that... You kind of know where it, to go, and, yeah. and, we, and we all do homework on the club, so we all know how they, how they play, we all know where they set up a set pieces, yeah. you know, so we kind of know where the ball is going to play. You know, if someone comes on, you know, Sacco comes on for England the other week and he plays on the wing, you know what's going on, they're going to feed Sacco down the wing, feed Grealish down the wing, so you kind of just got to right, get close. You've got to get, got to get close to the players, yeah. the dangerous players, as in the players that when they get in the box could be fouled. You know, you guys, the little jinky guys, you know, it's not worth being 25, 30 yards away when a guy was in the box and just say he's gone down the line. I yeah. don't know, I'll just let VR tell us. You've got, I'd rather make the decision myself than rely on VAR. Lovely. When you retire, can you go in and sort VAR out, right, please? I don't think just it, I don't think it, it needs, I know, I know you're, you're not, an ideal fan of VAR, Not I know. We're going to talk about it later, yeah, but, but I, I think I someone think... like you, 20, 25 years experience in the game, can go, right, speed this up, do that, da, da, da. We'll talk about it later, but I think, yeah. I think it'll be okay. It's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. Fair do. <sighs> up Shot. you get. That's fine. Up you get. That's fine. Won't be far away, that. That could be all right, that, couldn't it? It might be a bit long, but it's all right. So, Mike, I've noticed you've got a couple of uh, tattoos on yeah. your left and right leg. Yeah, that's my wife's name, Karam. Karam. And that, believe it or not, is when I got married, so which is the twenty uh, second of the seventh, ninety four. So I don't forget my anniversary. You see. <laughs> oh, that 
That could be lovely, couldn't it? That could be no, very nice. That could be in. That I could be eagle. Well. It was online. If that's an eagle, we'll do well on the par four. Quite like that. Quite like that. Yeah, good try. Oh. Good try. <laughs> I just want to see Mike Dean do a birdie dance, I've got to be honest. Or we could call it a chicken dance because of your old job. If you wish. <laughs> so you've got to get to the hole first. No. Oh, it's a tidy putt. <sighs> Lovely stuff. Take that away. Nice par. Yeah. Right, so this is... This is for the win, because you got a shot again. Again. For a Maurizio Pari. Come on. You... <laughs> oh, I'll give you that, mate. Oh, thanks, mate. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> Love it. Right, one up. But Mike is playing well. Okay. Rubbish. Again? <laughs> Again! So I'm just going Mike, to... talk to me about this driving. You might have to give me a lesson, mate. You're going to get me put to work and I'll be all right. <laughs> Mike, you're a big, uh, well, so I say big, massive Tranmere fan, aren't you? Yeah, massive. Yeah. But I thought you uh, changed alliances to Tottenham after that goal celebration. Well, as I said to you before, <laughs> As I said to you before on the, pre on the previous show, yeah. I love my job and if something, if something I work on pays off, like playing an advantage and a goal goes in, everybody's happy. I'm happy, my team's happy, yeah. you know, gaffers are happy. So, you, you know, providing you just use your experience, as I said before, you can kind of read what the next phase of play is going to be. Um, but it was a little bit over the top, the celebration, to be fair. But it, it also you depends. You must look back at that now. Oh, just, just absolutely luck. Could crease up laughing. Yeah, but I also think what well, idiot I made of myself, to be fair. But, but I just love it. It's about having fun, isn't it? I, I love it. You know, and it's, you know, yeah, I think Mike Reid done it years ago when I think Liverpool scored and he, he played and he gave it one of them. But yeah, if something, when you ref it, if something works out and you play an advantage and stuff and one more pass, ball goes in the back of the net, you think, great, you've kind of. You've, you kind of helped the game, haven't you? You know, you kind of stayed out of the way. You blow your whistle too early, give a free kick, lays a square ball in the back of the net. You've yeah. had it, haven't you? You know, so it's, uh, but it's good. But the timing was perfect, oh, wasn't wonderful, it? Wonderful. <laughs> you were proper giving it some. Wonderful. Right from the TV camera as well, as if I didn't know it was there as well. <laughs> <laughs> but like when everyone starts like doing the memes and stuff like that on Twitter and Instagram, I mean, we showed it loads on Soccer AM. Yeah. It, is, it is funny, but... It's like you want Soccer AM when someone scored a goal and it, you go through a cycle on Saturday and so ref you just go around the, around the thing doing all that every time <laughs> someone scores. But no, it, it, it is it is what it is, mate. Just just my personality and that's how I referee. So I uh, wouldn't have it any other way, to be fair. So instead of doing the birdie dance, if you get a birdie... Oh, we'll give you, one. Yeah, yeah we'll give... <laughs> I've got to get one first, so that's yeah. the problem. All right, done. Deal. We good? Yeah, you're fine. Yeah? 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 Fine. Beautiful. Good caddy, mate. Which refs are the funniest on a night out? Not that we ever have any, but I think um, we had a couple of stag do's over the years when some of the lads have been married, so Mossy's a good laugh, Yeah. to be fair. Lee Mason, obviously just retired Lee. He's more of the, uh, how should we say, master of ceremonies, if you know what I mean. But, uh, but he's, he, he is quite a funny guy, to be fair, when he goes yeah, off yeah. on one. But, but John's a good laugh. John's really funny. Really. Do funny. you still see some of the old schools? As not, well? not as much, to be fair. What um, do they do now? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I see Jeff Winter sometimes when I go to Middlesbrough. Uh, he works a little bit there. Um, Big Jeff Winter. Yeah, still in touch with Graham Paul now and again. Um, Barb, I spoke to last year. Just, just general chat, really. But you know, you don't guys move on different things, don't they? Even my roommates from years ago. I used to, I used to room with Andy Durso years ago, and yeah, Andy finished, and then. 
you say, I'll give you a ring, I'll, I'll keep in touch, and you only see each other like once or twice a year now, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. that, so. What about Howard Webb? I speak to Howard now and again, I think yeah. he's still in the States, Howard, so, but... Uh, Is he still an absolute brute? He's, he's still a big lad, yeah. He's a good lad. <laughs> he's, he's, a, good lad. he's a massive lad. Yeah, he's he? a proper, proper ref. Proper ref. Good referee as well, which is good. Don't do a World Cup final if you can't referee. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of pressure in a World Cup final, isn't there? There's a lot of pressure in any game, well, eh? yeah, especially, World... especially in a tournament, because you want to blow the whistle in a tournament to go home. You know, if you make a mistake in a, in a Euros or a World Cup, and you know, it's a, it's a big mistake, and you, obviously you missed the next round, will you get selected for the round after? Probably not. You might, sometimes you go home, it's, it's cutthroat business, to be fair, especially in tournaments. Before VAR, have you ever given a decision and within a split second gone, I've oh, 100%. absolutely balls up there. 100%, 100%, yeah. Yeah, all the time. Even now with VR, you make a mistake, but VR can only get involved in clearing obvious errors, so free kicking centre midfield is neither really there, throwing's neither really there, but yeah. I've, no, I've given free kicks that aren't free kicks. When it's not, I've given, yeah. thinking the free kicks, and they say, oh, why have I given that for? Well, the guys on the European say, what have you given for? I said, I just don't know. I think I've, I've seen somebody, I haven't seen somebody, if you know what I mean. Just, yeah, just, you, you've just gone with it, so, you know. I suppose it's, everything's going at 100 miles an hour. Yeah, so the, the worst thing is, are like... <laughs> yeah, you, you drive home from London for three or four hours, and you, you, I put matches there straight away when I get in, usually, and I think to myself, what have I done that for? And you know for where you made a mistake, because the phone's going on the way, and all the lads are thinking, oh, what have you done here? What have you done here? <laughs> you know, <laughs> Have you heard talk sport? Have you heard bloody radio father they giving you? Yeah, I've seen it. I've heard it all, yeah, thanks. You don't listen, surely you don't listen to that. If you've made a mistake passes, in a game, you don't put passes, on talk sport on the passes, way back. Passes two hours on the way, I'm done it. <laughs> passes two hours. <laughs> then ring a few lads another two hours, you're home then. It's great. <laughs> but, you, but you do, there is, there is some dross on the radio on the oh, way home, though. One, one, I've, one I've got put on like heart or something, <sighs> a bit of mellow no, magic. No, I might have absolute 80s on, on, a, <laughs> on, a, on a Sunday night on the way home. Hell, forgotten 80s, the old Matthew Rudd, I don't mind a bit of that. Oh, yes! Oh! <laughs> Come on, give us a mic, Dean Salem! No, no, he's had to sing the pot first. <laughs> oh, too much again. A bit thinny, that. That was. Oh, oh it's a great not effort. too shabby. Mike Dean for a birdie. Stay up. Oh! That's another par for Mike Dean. So this is what, to level it? This is for half, isn't it? Half. See if you've got another shot. to see that, do we? <laughs> oh, it's a shame. It's a bloody shame. It was just too far away for me to give you that as well. If you took the flag out, it would have gone That's in That's because I said to you on the last hole, I hate those putts. Well, I ain't complaining. Ring, I missed that as well. Ring, ringer. Uh, it's all square. Uh, oh, this, this is awesome. I absolutely love it. Uh, That's the end of part one. Uh, join us in part two. This is Mike Dean. Come on.